power. There we go. Oh, we want to put barn doors on that. Sorry, we got to put barn doors. Because we want to just skim the surface of this. And push it on hard. It's a friction fit. Uh, my name's Justin Eugene Evans. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is uh, about an hour north of Chicago. I've spent the last eight years of my life um, inventing the technology that you see here and that we're using on uh, Tom and George's film, uh, 400 Bullets. And uh, I'm incredibly grateful to both of them because they took a huge risk. There's, um, it's a big deal for people to say, hey, we're going to have our entire feature film rely on a piece of, a brand new piece of technology. Um, but I think that they'd be the first to agree that Anthem One has changed the way that they themselves make movies. We don't need generators anymore. Uh, the maximum wattage we have pulled on this entire film has been 600 watts. And uh, some of the locations we've lit are just massive. We're talking acres and acres of territory. And uh, so we've probably reduced the amount of electricity needed on a film set by 90, maybe 99%. And um, the only part of what we've invented that we couldn't demonstrate on this movie was our lithium ion battery technology. Um, but even without that, we're still just taking a, you know, a single cable and running it off of a 20 amp circuit plugged into somebody's garage. That's not how movies are made. That's how, you know, a, a high school or student movie is made. And it enables producers and directors to massively reduce their budgets because they don't have to have a 10 person GNL team, the generator, the 250 feet of cable, the five ton truck, all that goes away. And you can miniaturize that and now put it into the back of a minivan. That's, that's the revolution that Anthem One presents to filmmakers. I was an independent filmmaker shooting a, an independent feature film in Santa Fe, New Mexico and Terminator Salvation had come to town and blown a power transformer that caused rolling brownouts through one third of the state. And so suddenly my movie that I'd spent a year preparing and we had plenty of available power, every circuit you know, uh, in this abandoned prison was 60 amps. I had no available power. Terminator Salvation had rented every single generator within se a 75 mile uh, radius. And uh, we knew that we were losing our movie. And I turned to one of my investors and I said, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be a filmmaker. I want to fix this problem because it doesn't make sense that Charlie Chaplin would walk onto our film set and he wouldn't recognize the camera and he wouldn't recognize digital editing, but he'd recognize our lights. And that to me proved to be both the frustration, the challenge and the opportunity. Um, but along the way, uh, because one of the things that we've invented is the way to make LEDs removable from systems. There is no other company that can actually take the LEDs out of their lights. When their LEDs die, you throw away the entire system. With us, it's back to being like light bulbs. When the LEDs die, you just pop out this little thing we call a light card and uh, uh, put a new one in. And that meant that we could have a relationship with every single LED manufacturer on the planet and create light fields that are just as valuable to other industries that go beyond films. So uh, our applications are uh, military grade IR. Uh, the Canadian military is already one of our customers. Uh, black light, which is used at Disney World. Uh, medical grade sterilization. Uh, cannabis cultivation. Um, of course, film, water sterilization, mining, um, uh, structural uh, uh, testing, uh, being able to take um, UV or, or, or uh, infrared light and being able to inspect, say, the bottoms of bridges to make sure that their foundations are strong. There's 25 different industries that rely on industrial grade light. And Anthem One is now the best in the world at industrial grade light for every single one of those industries. Media just happens to be the first one we're going after because I used to be a cinematographer. So uh, this is an Anthem One. Uh, the Anthem One is a 200 watt five and a half inch square cube, about 140 uh, millimeters square cube. Um, weighs about six pounds or, you know, roughly, I'm bad at converting into kilograms, I think three and a half, four kilograms. Um, and so you can hold it in your hand. It's, it's not terribly heavy. Uh, it's military grade technology, which means that you, we've actually dropped an Anthem one on concrete a hundred times and it still works. Um, but it's only pulling 200 watts. And as you can see from this beam here, um, it's illuminating uh, it's almost a perfectly straight line going straight out and the Terminator 
where the beam ends is a hard line on the ground, which is different than most artificial lights. Most artificial lights have a strong corona uh, and, and then it falls off very gently. Ours doesn't work like that. Anthem 1 is like a, a wall of light that is emanating all in a straight line. Some of the advantages that means that this wall of light behaves like sunlight. It doesn't have a hot spot. It's more linear. You'll notice from my shadows that my shadows, if I didn't have other light sources that were interfering with it, my shadow is hard no matter where I am. That's never existed before. Usually it's hard in the center. And as I move off axis from the light, your shadow gets softer. And if you're working with an HMI, uh, your shadow actually has chromatic aberrations. One side is a little bit of a red fringe, the other side has a little bit of blue fringe. Um, our light doesn't have any of those flaws. It's just like sunlight. And uh, if, you, uh, if your camera was positioned over there, you'd actually see that you can't tell the difference between this and real moonlight. It totally looks like real moonlight. And, and if, if Tom and George were using traditional film lighting, they could not have pulled off this shot because to pull off this shot would have required in the neighborhood of probably 10 uh, 800 watt HMIs all lined up in a row, all silked, trying to get this nice even beam to cover this much territory because an HMI only has about a 60 degree beam uh, spread. And, uh, and you know, we're covering all the way from the building all the way to the end of, of these shipping containers with a single little tiny light on, on a stand. Um, other LEDs take tiny pieces of gold wire to electrify the positive and negative junction. Um, there is just an, an assumption that that is the only way to electrify an LED. We managed to eliminate the gold wire and move the positive and negative junction to the back side of an LED. And that gives you several critical advantages. The gold wire actually shadows LEDs and truncates the beam width. Once you move the gold wire out of the way, you can get incredibly wide beams of light. So that's one of the advantages. Um, the gold wire also shadows the LEDs, so they're 20% dimmer. You get rid of the gold wire, you immediately get 20% more lumens coming out of the front of your, your system. The gold wire is what frays and snaps. It's not LEDs that fail, it's not the diode itself, it's the gold wire that fails and then the LED is no longer electrified. You get rid of the gold wire and now the LEDs last exponentially longer and the gold wire is particularly prone to overheat. And so once you get rid of it, you can now overclock your LEDs another 50%. So we're achieving 70% more luminosity out of a LED now, at any given wattage than any of our competitors. And where that becomes critically important is when you start running off of batteries because that affects battery life. Someone else could say, well, we can get to your brightness level, but it's gonna take 600 watts, whereas we're 200 watts. And so we'll have 300% longer runtime on a lithium ion battery.